A volcano that hides in plain sight is now invading homes, walls bleeding sulfur, roads boiling open, and 500,000 people waking up in Campi Flegre's red zone. Recent research may have put the magma even closer to the surface than authorities admit. If so, why are entire neighborhoods still here? The answers begin beneath Naples, where a city was built atop a silent crater. Campi Flegre stretches across 13 kilometers of western Naples, its true shape hidden beneath the city's streets and neighborhoods. Unlike the sharp silhouette of Vesuvius, this is a caldera, a vast volcanic depression born not from a single eruptive peak, but from the collapse of an ancient volcano's roof. About 15,000 years ago, a series of explosive eruptions emptied the underlying magma chamber, leaving the ground above unsupported. The surface caved in, creating a wide, shallow bowl rimmed by a chain of low hills and ridges that now blend into the urban sprawl. From above, the outline is unmistakable, a curved arc of crater walls with a densely populated plain filling the center. Streets and apartment blocks follow the gentle contours of a landscape shaped by volcanic violence. Though most residents see only ordinary city blocks, unaware they're living atop the remnants of one of Europe's largest volcanic events. The caldera's floor, once a blasted wasteland, has been reclaimed by centuries of settlement, farming, and construction. Yet the ground beneath remains restless, storing heat, gas, and pressure in a vast reservoir that lies just a few kilometers down. Geologists use the word caldera to describe this kind of structure. It's not a cone or a mountain, but a sunken, sprawling field, one that can span many miles, as Campi Flegre does. The depression itself is a scar left by the collapse, its edges marked by ridges and uplifted ground that still trace the boundary of the ancient crater. The caldera's formation set the stage for everything that followed. The cycles of uplift and sinking, the scattered steaming vents, and the persistent risk of new eruptions. Understanding this hidden shape is key to grasping why so many people live in harm's way, and why the dangers are so difficult to see until they break through the surface. Naples and its surrounding towns have grown across the caldera's sunken floor, spreading from the sea to the shadow of the crater rim. Today, nearly 6 million people live in the greater metropolitan area, making this one of the most densely populated volcanic regions on the planet. The city's skyline is defined by modern high-rises, historic domes, and a patchwork of apartment blocks, all built atop layers of volcanic ash and centuries-old lava flows. Unlike the unmistakable cone of Vesuvius that rises over the bay, Campi Flegre hides in plain sight, a hazard buried beneath soccer fields, shopping centers, and traffic-clogged streets. Most residents go about their routines with little sense of the ground's restless history. Cafes open for the morning rush, school children cross the piazzas, and buses weave through neighborhoods that, from above, trace the subtle arc of the ancient collapse. The caldera floor appears flat and ordinary, yet every block is built on a landscape shaped by eruptions and uplift. Generations have paved over steaming vents, filled in craters and expanded suburbs into what was once a barren volcanic plain. The sheer scale of human presence here is staggering. New developments have pushed deep into the caldera's interior while older quarters hug the slopes of the crater rim. Satellite images reveal a dense urban web, rooftops and roads packed edge to edge, where the only hints of volcanic origin are the gentle curves of the land and the occasional burst of steam from a sidewalk crack. For most, the volcano is invisible, a distant memory or a footnote in local history. But the numbers tell a different story. Hundreds of thousands live directly above the most active zones, and millions more are within reach of any future eruption or disruption. The city's very existence atop Campi Flegri has turned a hidden geological scar into a stage for everyday life, raising the stakes for every family, 
business and community built on this restless ground. At Pichirelli, the ground does not just steam, it breathes. Here, a tangled field of fumaroles pushes out thousands of tons of volcanic gas every day. Instruments placed near the vents regularly record carbon dioxide emissions in the range of 4,000 to 5,000 tons per day. That is among the highest daily outputs measured at any active volcano worldwide, and the trend is not declining. Each reading tells the same story. The system beneath is charged, restless, and forcing its way to the surface. Temperatures at the main Pichirelli vent have climbed past 115 degrees Celsius, hot enough that water flashes instantly to vapor. The air shimmers with heat. Gas monitors tick upward as plumes drift across the path, stinging the eyes and catching in the throat. The ground itself is etched with mineral stains, yellow, white, and green, where vapor cools and leaves behind a crust of elemental sulfur and other compounds. These are not just surface stains. The gas is moving laterally through loose soils, cracks, and even under foundations, finding its way into the built environment. On the edge of the fumarole field, a handheld sensor blares a warning as carbon dioxide levels spike. Measurements inside nearby buildings show that concentrations can rise far above outdoor background, especially overnight or during periods of low wind. In some rooms, gas accumulates to levels that trigger health warnings, with headaches and dizziness reported by those who spend time indoors. It is not just the carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, with its sharp, rotten egg odor, and sulfur dioxide, which burns the lungs, are also present in measurable amounts. The numbers are not abstract. They signal a continuous, aggressive invasion, an ongoing transfer of volcanic energy from deep underground straight into the air people breathe and the spaces they inhabit. Every ton of gas released at Pichirelli is a sign that the volcano's internal pressure is not contained. The field here acts as a pressure valve, but the scale of degassing makes clear that the system is far from stable. The energy driving these emissions is reshaping the surface, setting the stage for what happens when volcanic gases meet the walls and floors of ordinary homes. On the streets near Pichirelli, the ground is changing faster than city crews can keep up. Asphalt splits open, revealing steaming cracks that hiss and spit. After every repaving, the surface bubbles and warps again, sometimes within days. The problem runs deeper than potholes. Superheated volcanic gases force their way up from below, carrying dissolved minerals that eat through concrete and stone. In some spots, the pavement is soft underfoot, the heat rising so intensely that shoes stick to the tar on summer afternoons. The same process plays out inside buildings. Gases seep through foundations and creep along pipes, invisible until they cool and condense. Where the air is cooler, inside a living room, a storage closet, or beneath a gym floor, the vapor loses its grip on the minerals it carried. Sulfur, chlorides, and other compounds settle out, forming thick yellow and white crusts that coat tiles, walls, and furniture. In the worst hit homes along Via Antiniana, the floors are slick with a mineral ooze that hardens into brittle layers, sometimes centimeters thick. Residents describe scraping it off with shovels, only to find it back within weeks. Public infrastructure fares no better. Sidewalks buckle, water mains corrode, and gas lines become brittle where volcanic fluids pool beneath the surface. Maintenance crews patch the same stretches of road over and over, but the vents always return. Each new crack is a reminder that the volcano isn't contained by city boundaries or engineering fixes. The chemistry at work is relentless. As hot gases cool, they shed their mineral load, building up crusts that can block drains, jam doors, and damage electrical systems. This is not an abstract hazard. The mineral deposits are tangible, gritty underfoot, and sharp to the nose with the sting of sulfur and acid. They serve as a daily warning that the boundary between the caldera and the built environment is vanishing. For the people living here, the volcano is no longer just a distant threat. It's a force that seeps into every crack, stains every surface, and refuses to be paved over. Two recent scientific studies have drawn very different conclusions about what is happening beneath Campi Flegre, and the gap between them is not just academic. At the heart of the dispute is how researchers interpret seismic signals and gas emissions, specifically 
how they use those signals to estimate the depth of magma and the state of the volcanic system. One group, working with the Instituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Volcanologia and University College London, built their model around a combination of earthquake relocation and surface gas readings. Their analysis suggested that magma may be rising to within 4 kilometers of the surface and that the system is entering an extremely dangerous phase. They called for authorities to classify Campi Flegri as being on the verge of a critical transition, arguing that the patterns of carbon dioxide spikes and shallow seismicity point to a growing risk of eruption. A second group, led by researchers from Stanford and collaborating European institutes, pushed back against this conclusion. Using advanced seismic tomography and magnetotelluric imaging, they argued that the evidence for shallow magma is much weaker than it appears. Their models show a gas-rich hydrothermal reservoir between 2 and 4 kilometers deep, but no clear sign of a large melt body above 4 kilometers. According to their interpretation, most of the signals, ground uplift, gas emissions, and even the recent earthquake swarms can be explained by pressurized gases moving through fractured rock, not by a surge of magma approaching the surface. They caution that the system is volatile, but insist that the risk of an imminent large eruption is lower than some headlines suggest. The disagreement runs deeper than just numbers on a chart. Both camps rely on complex models that are highly sensitive to the data and assumptions fed into them. Small changes in how earthquake locations are picked or how rock properties are calibrated can shift the apparent depth of key features by hundreds of meters. The choice between tomography and relocation methods, the way gas ratios are interpreted, and even the selection of which seismic events to include all can swing the results. Without full access to raw datasets, it is nearly impossible for outside experts to rerun the models and test these assumptions directly. What this means for residents is unsettling. Uncertainty does not equal safety. The science is not settled and the stakes are measured in the lives and homes of half a million people living above a restless caldera. Pressure is building beneath Campi Flegri, and every new measurement adds to the sense of urgency. On June 30th, 2025, the caldera was rocked by a magnitude 4.6 earthquake, the strongest ever recorded here. It wasn't a one-off. In the past year alone, five quakes above magnitude 4 have shaken the red zone, sending cracks through apartment blocks and forcing families out of their homes. The ground beneath Pozzuoli has risen by 1.4 meters since 2005, a slow-motion heave that warps roads, splits foundations, and strains the city's ancient and modern infrastructure alike. Traditional monitoring stations logged around 12,000 earthquakes in the last three years, but artificial intelligence combing through raw data has revealed the true number is closer to 54,000. Most were too small to feel, but together, they tell a story of relentless fracturing and stress. Microquakes swarm beneath the surface, tracing out hidden faults and fractures, pathways for gas, heat, and, potentially, magma. This is not the first time the caldera has sent such warnings. In 1538, a surge in seismicity and ground uplift culminated in the sudden birth of Monte Nuovo, a new volcanic cone that rose from farmland in a matter of days. The eruption buried fields, forced evacuations, and left a crater that still scars the landscape. The parallels are impossible to ignore. Uplift, swarms of quakes, a restless volcano pushing at the limits of its underground prison. Each new quake, each centimeter of uplift, adds to the strain. The caldera is not a passive landscape. It is an active system, storing energy and searching for release. The evidence is written in the ground, in the walls of homes, and in the relentless tally of seismic events. Pressure is mounting, and the signs are growing harder to ignore. Half a million people live in the Campi Flegre red zone, but the machinery of evacuation rarely moves beyond paper. Behind closed doors, city officials and business leaders grapple with a dilemma. Prioritize public safety or protect the local economy.
hoteliers and real estate developers have pressed regional authorities to avoid even the mention of evacuation drills, worried about lost bookings and plummeting property values. Leaked records from 2024 show hospitality groups sponsoring reassurance campaigns, urging officials to frame the situation as under control and to delay large-scale drills. Minutes from a September 2023 emergency council meeting reveal that, after a magnitude 4.2 quake, plans for a test exodus were shelved for further study following a roundtable with business representatives. Emergency planners draft and revise evacuation routes but each time the discussion turns to implementation, local mayors and business consortiums push back. Their argument, a false alarm could devastate the region's fragile tourism and trigger a real estate collapse. Meanwhile, requests for continuous gas emission data from Pissirelli remain only partially answered. Officials cite technical delays, but the gaps breed suspicion among residents and independent scientists. The result is a standoff. A population perched atop an active caldera, caught between the logic of safety and the inertia of economics. In the neighborhoods closest to Pichirelli, daily life is shaped by symptoms few outsiders ever notice. Residents wake up to burning eyes, persistent coughs, and the metallic taste of sulfur in the back of their throats. Headaches and skin rashes are common, especially after nights when the wind dies down and gas accumulates indoors. Local doctors have tracked a steady rise in complaints tied to volcanic emissions, with the elderly and children most at risk. Some families keep windows taped shut and avoid certain rooms altogether, moving beds away from walls where the mineral crust is thickest and the air feels hottest. The threat goes beyond private homes. The Roman amphitheater in Pozzuoli a monument that has survived two millennia of earthquakes and eruptions, now faces a quieter enemy. Ground uplift and microquakes have opened fresh cracks in ancient masonry, while mineral-laden steam seeps into vaults and corridors, leaving stains and brittle deposits that threaten the structure's stability. Heritage officials monitor the amphitheater with sensors and periodic closures, but each new tremor brings fresh worry about irreversible damage. Facing official delays and incomplete data, residents have turned to their own tools. Thousands now use smartphone apps and low-cost sensors to track tremors and gas levels, sharing real-time alerts across neighborhoods. This crowdsourced vigilance bridges the gap left by government monitoring, giving people a measure of agency even as the ground shifts beneath their feet. For many, survival depends not just on official warnings, but on the collective watchfulness of neighbors and friends. Today, over 500,000 people live in Campi Flegre's official red zone, directly atop a caldera that last erupted in 1538. Recent weeks have brought daily earthquake swarms up to magnitude 4.6 and more than 1.4 meters of ground uplift since the 1950s, clear signs of renewed unrest. Field evidence now shows volcanic gases and minerals physically invading homes, roads, and public buildings, not just as invisible threats, but as tangible damage across Pissirelli and Solfatara. Scientific debate continues over how close the magma sits beneath the surface, and no official consensus exists on immediate evacuation. Despite centuries of study and advanced monitoring, it remains unknown when, or if, a major eruption will occur. What is certain, Campi Flegre's activity is accelerating and its hazards are no longer hidden. With half a million residents exposed and essential infrastructure at risk, the facts demand constant vigilance and transparent reporting from all authorities involved.